One of the things I wanted to say is I am aware of the fact that if something is too good to be true, it usually is. And I appreciate the fact that a lot of people think the same way to the point where they question the authenticity of this bag. Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Diction. Today I'm bringing to you an interim review, first impressions, of my first leather Fendi baguette in the regular size. Is it too good to be true? Now, if you haven't seen my unboxing video of this bag, circle back in my feed, otherwise I'll leave a link to it up above and in the description box below. But this bag, I really kind of was not interested in. Um, it was part of the full winter 22 drop. I thought it was too muted for me, um, at least at the pictures that I had seen. I had not seen one in person until the day following my Fendi event on the 29th of September. And if you haven't seen that one, check that out too. I'll link that above. And I kind of just kept going back to it and I kept going back to it and I thought, that bag. That's beautiful. And I left it. Then I looked at my Instagram feed and I saw that it would go with every single one of my outfits. And then I shared with my friends, the Fendi enablers, and they told me that it was currently on satire for about $1,400 less than the recommended retail price at the boutique. Well, that kind of sealed the deal for me. And so I purchased it. So here's the thing. So many of you said when I unboxed the bag and people who've subsequently seen that video, there's been so many bad reviews of satire online that I would be really worried about the authenticity of that bag. And I was like, oh, really? Like, I don't read those reviews. I mean, I take it on face value that the brand is who they are. And if they're not, then, you know, I'll deal with it. And I've actually got a video coming, um, of a similar, not a similar, of another experience, let's just say, that I've had with an international luxury brand. More on that later. La Marque. So uh, then there were questions around the authenticity of the bag and a lot of people concerned that I hadn't had the bag authenticated. And it just never crossed my mind, to be honest. It never crossed my mind. Um, and then the more I thought about it, the more I went, oh, do I really want to know if it's authentic or not? Because I've been using it. I filled up my Instagram grid with outfits of the day featuring it. I think it goes with everything. Um, and, you know, I will tell you a bit about some of the things that I've noticed about it, including whether it's authentic. So stick around. Okay, so the bag itself. Look, it's a pretty unstructured bag. Um, and to be honest, I've been wearing it top handle a little bit. I've been wearing it in the crook of my arm. And yes, I can wear it like this. So I've not worn any of my baguettes like that because these ones have the slightly longer shoulder strap. It's really handy for when you're at the shops and you need to be hands-free. Um, to be able to sling it on your shoulder and that it fits. So that was a plus. It also has this shoulder strap and I keep it on just so I've got the option of throwing it on, but it does not work crossbody on me at all. I have worn it crossbody and what I do to wear it crossbody is I link my O-lock strap to this top handle and that sits at a great crossbody length for me. So I'll pop the mod shot in where I'm wearing it crossbody so you can see. But I really feel like baguettes aren't made for crossbody wear. I'm, I don't love the aesthetic of it crossbody, but it's a good option to have. This is probably the only baguette of mine that I would crossbody of this size because my other two, one is sequins and one is embroidered. And that kind of friction against those finishes would just damage them, I think. So the leather one made sense. Now this one, uh, someone else asked me a question about the hardware, that it kind of looked foggy. Um, it is kind of foggy. Fendi hardware just has like a foggy finish. It It's not really aged gold and it's not like really shiny gold, but it does have, I'm not sure if it's going to pick it up at all, but it is kind of a foggy gold finish. It's not, it doesn't have clarity to it. Um, and that's normal. When I looked at all of my other pieces, because 
I don't look at things that closely, it's exactly the same. So I was able to say to that person, yeah, it's, it's similar. Now these ones on the inside are pretty basic compared to my more special baguette, so the, the purple sequin. It just has a big black fabric lining. In fact, I can pick it up and I can pull it out and one zipper pocket on the back. Now inside of the zipper pocket is a little serial number there um, and also some of the details that you find on Fendi bags like this little FF at the back of the zipper. If you can see it, is it gonna focus? There we go. A couple of other details that, you know, convinced me that it was authentic is on the back of the buckle. You can see Fendi is just there. Also on all of the hardware, you can see that Fendi is embossed there. Um, and, you know, generally speaking, it has all of the signs of a Fendi authentic bag. In fact, another sign that I found that I wasn't really aware of till now is that on the inside of the bag, you can see Fendi is just written in the fabric very, very slightly here. Also inside of the bags is another tab and this one has the RFID information on it. So I won't put it up close, but there should be kind of two tabs, one that has a big serial number and one that has the RFID on it. So in terms of what fits in this bag, pretty much anything that I want except for like an agenda but why would you be carrying an agenda around in your baguette maybe a small one but everything fits um, and that can be a real problem with this bag because the more you put in it the more misshapen it gets I like the look of it but functionality wise it can be hard to kind of close the clasp so I'm going to get the things that I would typically carry in this bag so that you can see what I mean. I'm going to be taking my peekaboo out with me today, so I've already loaded that up. So I'll just load all of its contents into this. There's no organizer in my bag. I really don't want one. I've got one for my sequin baguette, but I don't really want it to be too structured. I suppose I could try it for this video so that you can see. So I've got my phone. I just pop that in. I've got a um, card holder. What else have I got in here? Ooh, car fob, keys, lipstick, AirPods, Dale's Addiction bag hook. So that's everything. And I'll just close that up. Okay, I'm holding it and now I'm not. So as the day wears on, we'll just let it do its thing. It's jumping around, I'm carrying it, whatever. It just starts to get like this little divot in it, which is fine for some people. They'll just go, oh, I don't like it. Um, that's what happens. Like it's an unstructured bag. Okay. I don't mind that at all. I quite like it. But when I open the bag to get things out, no problems. When I go to close it though, it's just a little hard because it's unstructured. So that's probably one thing that is a little bit annoying about it. Um, but yeah, if I didn't have the other strap, I wouldn't care so much because I don't really use that strap. But sometimes I just like the look of the strap of this one kind of hanging off the other D ring. Just a little bit more interesting, you know? All right. I'll grab the organizer and we'll have a look at it with the organizer in it, just so you can see the difference if you're somebody that doesn't really embrace the wrinkles like me. So the organizer is currently in my sparkly purple sequin bag and I got an organizer for it. You'll never, you'll never guess what I found in here. I bought, I'm gonna out him. I bought my husband a pack of Calvin Klein jocks and I found them all in here because he hates them. And so I often find in my drawers and in my bags, if I've bought him a t-shirt or a pair of shorts or something that he doesn't like, he hides them in my wardrobe. <laughs> I thought my bag was looking pretty plump and now I know why. So I've got this um, organizer that I keep in here just for storage. And now you know more about my marriage than uh, you probably should. <laughs> this organizer is from Zimoni and Zimoni gifted me a couple of organizers and a discount code for you guys so if you're ever interested in organizers um 
check out my discount code. So there you see it fits in there nicely, actually goes very well. So the organizer for me is not really to organize things, but more to keep the structure of the bag. So I'll just load it back up with all of the things that I had in before. I might use the little pockets for my keys and my wallet, just because. And khaki. Okay, so everything is inside. And there you go. You get a much more structured shape. Let's just jiggle it around a little bit. So it still does change shape on the top, but it goes flat instead of all mangled. Um, so look, I don't mind that. That's pretty good. That's a good alternative. Maybe I could use the organizer because I still get that kind of lived in look without it being too straight. So yeah, an organizer is probably a good option. One of the things I wanted to say is I am aware of the fact that if something is too good to be true, it usually is. And I appreciate the fact that a lot of people think the same way to the point where they question the authenticity of this bag. And so before I filmed this review, I wanted to speak with some level of credibility about this bag. So I got it authenticated by real authentication. And I sent through the photos that they requested and then they sent me an email asking for more photos. They wanted to see photos of the serial number which I included but then an RFID and as I said to you before like I'd not really taken any notice of that before because I've always bought from boutique so I went searching for that I found that so then I submitted those pictures then about 20 minutes later because I asked for the one hour turnaround I got another email asking for more pictures pictures of the zipper particular angles of the zipper pictures of um, different elements of the hardware and different angles of the hardware. And I'm thinking, this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. So I submitted those photos and then waited and waited and waited. And then I got another email. And the email I got is my authenticity certificate that the bag was deemed authentic. This is not a paid promotion. I've got no affiliation with real authentication. The seeds of doubt were sown so much so that, you know, if you're on YouTube, I think you've got a responsibility to kind of check your sources. And here I am talking about saving almost $1,400 off the recommended retail price off a current season Fendi baguette. Um, and you guys are saying, but is it authentic? Is it real? I feel like I've got an obligation to share that. So I paid 70 US dollars to find out in the hour that it is authentic. And yeah, I was a little bit nervous given the back and forth and the additional photos that were requested. But now I'm happy to say to you, sometimes you can get a good deal on luxury. And that's not some, it's not a way that I've ever shopped in the past. But it's a way that I feel is valid. And so whilst this is not an endorsement of Satire, certainly the two experiences that I've had buying Fendi through Satire, my Fendi blazer, my men's blazer and this bag have both been absolutely positive experiences. No frills, but very positive in terms of the product, the quality of the product and the condition of the product when it arrived to me. So, um, yeah. I think do your own research. Um, I know the returns policy with satire is a bit tricky, I'm going to say, um, but at least they have one. Um, I'm going to film a video about another company that has really, really disappointed me. Um, Lamarck, as I've been talking about, I've been dealing with them on a purchase and I can honestly say I've never dealt with a more rude, obnoxious, ignorant customer service team ever. Um, but let's not put shade on this beautiful bag. So what am I saying? Oh, I can't believe it's taken me this long to get a leather regular size baguette. I've always said the mini size is my favourite. But this one has changed the game in terms of 
what I think about wearing baguettes because my other two are, you know, they're quite delicate. Um, I think that shopping around is important. I think doing your own research is important. I think knowing your colours and your wardrobe is really important because this is the first time I purchased a bag having actually considered all of those things and I'm really happy to say that it's worked out for the best and I'm yeah absolutely smug with this bag as you would know if you follow me on Instagram. So what are your thoughts around purchasing through these third-party providers? Um, were you surprised to see that my bag was real? Um, and you know just general thoughts in terms of that due diligence around purchasing third party. Do you prefer it with the organizer or do you prefer it more slouchy and undone like I do? Love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You're always going to get Fendi content here, sometimes some other stuff, but there seems to be a real Fendi vibe happening um, and it continues. Um, what else do I want to say to you? Yeah, give it a thumbs up and come back for my next video, likely to be on a Wednesday or Sunday. Till then, ciao!